So I guess we can start. Yep, sounds good. So it, it's um, mainly things to cover that Sage was doing uh, in, uh, in the last few days. So he uh, did some progress on adding uh, Ceph ADM to Tautology. Uh, we had Paul Kastner uh, doing lots of stuff for monitoring for Ceph ADM, which is really awesome. And yeah, there are two things to discuss, but without anyone from, but without uh, Sage being here, it, it might sense to might make sense to just postpone it to next week. Um, first one is um, OS day removal, where I think. Um, the Ceph ADM should do everything to remove all of this, to make it simple for administrators. And Sage's opinion was to just keep it, keep the code simple in, in Ceph ADM and uh, have someone else like the dashboard implement that code to properly remove uh, all of these. <laughs> I guess we have to discuss it with Sage. It doesn't make sense to have it here. Um, and, and the one other comment on one comment on that, I guess, is that for removing OSDs, let's see. I mean, we just I just added a doc for this in Rook, just so people can do it manually. And we have like seven steps for removing an OSD, so it is kind mm. of um, tedious, but at the same time, I'm not sure how much more we could simplify it since, well, most of the steps are around checking which OSD to remove and if it's healthy and mark it out. And then there's really only one purge command step, OSD purge, to remove the OSD. And yeah, uh, yeah, we should discuss the Sage, but it may already be simple enough that the dashboard or other clients can work with the OSD purge command mm -hmm. as it is. So at, at some point we have to actually implement that proper. Okay. Um, I'll just add a link to the Rook documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or we are doing it in the, um, Orchestrator mo manager modules um, for uh, Ceph ADM or for Rook, or we are, we are not doing it anywhere, and and just get the administrators figure out how to remove all of these. And I don't know. It it especially if you want to properly support um, replacing all of these, we should, in my opinion, have a proper code uh, for, for replacing code function for, for doing that automatically. Right. I guess, yeah, replacing an OSD is still uh, kind of complicated because when we replace an OSD, do we assume the disk has already been replaced if it failed or if it's still there, we want to format it or but there's definitely some scenarios to to walk through. For yeah, for uh, for rep for replacing OSD, I think the uh, the idea was to have it a two stage operation. One is to remove that OSD uh, by marking it as being destroyed within Ceph, and then creating that OSD again with a defined um, OSD ID. And leaving leaving it in the crush map in the same place in the tree. Exactly. Right. Yep. But that's a very much um, imperative operation, and nothing you really want to specify in the uh, self cluster custom resource. Exactly.
Um, yeah, and the other thing was um, having a proper Python packet. We've stumbled across that again. Um, but yeah, something again we have to discuss with Sage. Um, did I miss anything? Daniel, uh, Mike? Okay. Um, Travis. Yeah, Tom. Um, Rook, just to catch up uh, from the, the last few weeks, 1.2 was released just before the holidays. Uh, I think on Wednesday around, what was that, the 20th? No, 18th, somewhere around there. Who's track of time? Um, we are planning the first patch release today. Um, based on a couple of fixes, including a, an OSD um, fix from Sebastian. Um, so thanks for that. I don't know that we need to discuss any of those fixes here, but just so you're aware. The, and then I had a couple of questions around the Python client code generation. So we had the, that issue from a few months ago. Um, is that something oh yeah sebastian do you want to comment on on that i couldn't remember like all the the settings validation updates that you keep making manual um well it looks like yeah. manually but i know you're generating them like what do we need to know that the, the 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 changes to the uh validations were done manually okay yep um, okay, so yeah, I, I just need to find time to actually work on it. It's um, just a matter of having a few minutes to work on it. Um, okay, sounds good. Just wanted to ask how that's going. I, 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 all... I would like to make it as soon as possible, if, if possible. Sure. Sounds good. Um, and then, oh, just another note about something upstream. We had a security review for Rook uh, before the break, and I opened up a few GitHub issues to track those work items. Nothing major really was found. Probably the most severe issue was logging of sensitive information, uh, Ceph keys, if debug logging was enabled. I think there's a PR already for that, but I'm still catching up on, on PRs. So Range validation to Ceph CRDs. Yeah, so okay. there's, yeah, like for ports, we want to make sure ports aren't specified out of range of a you know, one to sixty-five thousand. Um, some other little issues. That, yeah, there are a couple around the the CRD validation just to tighten up that as the more validation we can do in the in the YAML, the you know, the more issues we prevent in the code. Yeah. So the actually doing these uh Python client validation would make it much easier to add new validations to to the YAMLs. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, those are my main thoughts that came to mind. Uh, Deb, any other issues to bring up here that you can think of? Uh, no, nothing for that, for that meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's all from my side then. Yeah. Is there anything else to discuss today? Three, two, right. one, then. All right. Enjoy the week. So we'll, and we'll all catch up this week, and next week we'll have more to talk about. Yeah, definitely. And especially with Sage being back next week. Um, yeah. Then. Sounds good. Enjoy. Bye. All right. See you. Thanks. Bye-bye.